welcome we are going to show how to um, how to install and how to get started with, with, with PureScript. Uh, PureScript is a strongly typed functional programming language and it compiles to JavaScript. There's also other backends, but uh, we're not going to go into that right now. Uh, you can find a lot of information on PureScript from their uh, the main website, which is purescript.org. Um, uh, you can find a lot of like um, quick start guides and documentations and how to install and uh, like the, the great community behind PureScript you can find on Slack, on IRC or Discord. So I, I highly encourage you to to join the, the community and uh, get involved and uh, ask questions because that's definitely the best way to um, the best way to learn. So in, in the documentation here, you'll, you'll find how to install and how to get started. But in case video is the uh, medium of choice for you to, to get started with things, then um, yeah, you're, you're, you're in the right place. So let's see. Oh, by the way, there's also a, a book for, for PureScript. So there's PureScript by, by example, which I highly recommend. And there's an extensive documentation repository. So please try them out as well. Um, OK, so let's let's get started. I have created a very simple. So uh, there's a there, there are a few steps here. We have already done a few of them because uh, we don't really want to wait too much during uh, during the stream. So um, during the video. So make sure you have uh, Node.js installed. Uh, make sure you, you can <coughs> just create a directory. Uh, you can call it demo or whatever you want and navigate to it. Then you will want to initialize a new npm project with npm in it. And then you will need to install the compiler and package manager, which are uh, PureScript and Spago. And uh, you can find these details also on, 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 on the website, right? If you look at uh, the first thing here is like you can install PureScript and Spago. Here the explanations how to install them globally in, in the video. We've, we've installed them locally into this project, right? Um, and then we will do the next steps together, right? So the point is, I will show you how to create a very simple application that just does a uh, um, HTTP request, uh, a GET request, on, and grab some HTML, right? Um, so let's see how we can do that in PureScript. So again, I'm assuming you've already done all of this, so you, you, you can um, do all this. I, I'm using Visual Studio Code, but you can use any editor. Most of them are, are supported by the, by the tooling. Um, OK, so then. Let's see how, how we can uh, figure out how to do this. First off, is you will need to, to, to know which kind of library you can use um, for, um, uh, for, for doing HTTP requests. And unfortunately, uh, that's something that you will find in the documentation, but it's not very, it's not, there's no very fast way to do it. So the, probably the best way to find out wh where, which kind of package is, uh, does something that you want to do, something that you're looking for is probably to just ask the community either in Slack or ARC, since those are, uh, you'll get an answer a lot faster, but also this course will, will probably do. So I already know that in order to do uh, you know, HTTP requests, one of the options out there is FJAX. So I will just uh, go to like the documentation repository, which is pursuit.purescript.org. Uh, and I will just uh, go to the FJAX um, uh, page here for documentation. And then in the uh, the main page here, you will find some uh, installation instructions. Uh, you'll you'll often find Bower instructions, but these have been uh, it, we we now have Spog, which we can use instead. So I'll show you how to do that. But before that, it also says that you intend to use a library. So this library, FJAX, works with both um, both in browser and Node.js. If you're using it in browser, then you don't need anything uh, additional. This works with the H, uh, XHR. Um, um, capabilities of from browsers, but if you um, if you want to use it in Node.js, as the documentation says here, we need to add an additional dependency. So we'll add it right now in our uh, project, right? So as documented here, we need to install um, to install this thing, right? So we'll just uh, open a console and do npm install minus i xhr2. Sorry, I mistyped. We need xhr2. Um, and then it should be added to our package JSON file. Let's double check. But it was added here as dependencies, right? So we have PureScript and Spago added as dev dependencies, and then we have uh, XHR2 as a dev dependency. Okay, so let's um, 
continue reading here in the documentation, right? So um, you can construct, so in the introduction, it says you can construct uh, request using the request function, right? So what we're going to do now is we're literally just going to copy paste this code and then we're going to try to read it and understand it, right? So we're literally just going to grab all of this code and then copy it and then go into our Visual Studio Code instance and uh, we'll see that we, right now we don't have any Spago project, right? So there's this is one step that I forgot to, to add here. Uh, so we, we've done step five, we'll add step six, uh, initialize the Spago project, uh, run Spago init, right? Uh, probably not a huge surprise there, so let's do that. We can do this. Right, and it will generate some uh, basic uh, project setup, and then we can also do Spago install uh, fjax just to get this out of the way as well. And this also install the uh, local, like uh, all of the packages and dependencies for 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 fjax. Uh, so we've done these steps as well, and now we can open the main file. Actually, before we do that, let me. Um, let me show you a, a little bit what Spago has done and what the directory structure is, right? So um, we won't be bothered too much about the dot Spago and the, as, just as much as we don't care much about what's in node modules, right? So this is just tooling stuff. We don't really care that much what's, what's going on in here. So it creates an SRC, uh, a sources uh, directory with the, the main file. By default, it um, it, it only logs um, uh, this cool um, um, icon here, uh, which is uh, some spaghetti. Uh, and it, it tells us that uh, there is no output directory, which means that uh, we, we need to run a build. So we can just click here for it to start building the project and it will, it will literally do that in the background. And then we have a, a test directory with, all, with a main, which uh, is literally the same, but it tells you that you should add some tests, so there's no pre-built tests or anything like that. Uh, and then you'll probably see some dot files here that are not very important right now. We'll skip over them. The important bits are that uh, you, you also get this Spago file, which uh, describes what sort of PureScript dependencies your project has, right? And since we wrote uh, Spago install fjax, then it was added here. And then there's a few default ones like console and effect and PSCPI support. These are all just uh, let it be for, to be able to run console things like logging in the console. This is for effects, which we'll get into briefly in a second. And this is just for the interactive setup, which we'll not go into in this video. Um, so that, that's pretty much it. Uh, note that all your sources need to be under this path. So if you want to add uh, source files somewhere else, you'll need to alter this. So please be careful with that. We're not uh, going to dull and everything like that in this video. So let's go back to our main and see uh, see what's up here. So by default, we have this kind of thing. We can do Spago run to run it and we'll see that it will just print this uh, icon here. Uh, we can also hover over things to, to see their type and see information about them and some some documentation in case it exists so you can uh, you can see it here right uh, this works uh, so let's go back we said that we want to copy all of this code and figure out how to run it right because just logging uh, spaghetti in, in in the console is not uh, necessarily interesting uh, so let's paste uh, all of that let's get some more uh, screen room because we are um, uh, we're running with uh, a pretty uh, big fonts here to make things easier to read. So let's let's save this file and we will get a warning that tells us that we don't have... Uh, uh, this warning literally says that uh, the type of main is inferred as effect unit and that we should probably add that uh, declaration here. So we can just do that and we can type main has type effect unit. Uh, and notice that effect was not here earlier and then and that so let, let me do that again slower right so as i was typing effect the the, compile, the id said okay you probably want this thing that's an effect right uh, and then if i just hit enter here then it will add the import automatically and the unit is already imported in prelude so we don't need to worry about that too much Right, so let's let me try to walk you through what this code does, right? Uh, just so it's not too, too foreign. You can always just hover over things and uh, read our documentation. We, I don't want this video to be too long, so if you want to do some reading, uh, please, please do follow the, the steps and uh, get the same thing for yourself and, and read at your own pace. 
<laughs> so let's see. Launch F is the, the interesting thing thing here, right? So um, in PureScript we have two types of effects, right? We have effect and F uh, of uh, well runtime sort of effects. Effect is sort of like synchronous um, uh, synchronous effects, and F is asynchronous effects. Um, and th the main idea is that the library that handles uh, uh, HTTP requests runs in F because well it's called Fjax, right? So of course it runs in F. That's, that's its whole deal. Um, so uh, what we need to do is we need to convert the asynchronous F here into an effect. So that's what launch F does, right? It basically given an F, right? And that's what uh, what it says there, right? So it's for all A, if you have an F of A, then you get an effect of a fiber of A. And we don't really care about the fiber. We don't want to cancel the asynchronous call, so we will just ignore it via void, right? So what we're saying is just, hey, wait for, uh, for F to finish, or for this uh, asynchronous um, code to finish up. Um, Okay, so then we have this thing called, uh, so using do syntax, we, we're basically uh, running inside the f monad here. Uh, that's a very scary word, but it's pretty simple syntax. We just say, okay, run a request with these parameters, and let's try to format this a bit so it's easier to read, right? Uh, so all of these things that I will uh, uh, indent here are just parameters sent to request, right? So it's... Uh, and then we, we, the request takes only one parameter, which is a default request, which everything else is just a parameter for default request. So I'll indent this accordingly here. Right, and then we have an uh, uh, URL, and then we have a method, and then we have uh, of some format, and that, that's all the arguments, right? So what does this say? Okay, so I want you to do a request using the default request template, but use this URI, and well, this URI doesn't make sense, right? So let's just grab a different URI. Let's just grab this page, right? The, the page or for the FJAX documentation. So let's just plug this in here, just paste it over. Uh, then we want to use the left get method. What's left? Well, there are two types of methods, right? You, want, you, you can do a an existing like predefined method like get, post, or put, or whatever, or you can use, and those are tagged by left. And then you can use uh, custom methods, right? If you have some something custom in your web server and that's uh, encoded by right. So we will almost always use left here. So we will do left get. And then response format. Well, the response format for this is HTML. It's definitely not JSON. So let's just do response format of string, right? Which is, again, we get autocomplete here. You can just uh, autocomplete it to string. Right, so then, and then store the result of this computation of this request in result. Uh, the thing with result is if, if, you, if you're familiar with, uh, with JavaScript, result is, should feel to you like it, this should be some sort of uh, async thi thing, right? Uh, some sort of callback or whatever. Well, in this case, it's not, right? Because that's what the F monad does, right? So you can bind something to result, and then you will only get to this thing when result is done, right? So you'll only start to evaluate and look at what's inside result when this is done. And this is handled automatically behind the scenes by uh, uh, by the code written for the F monad and for, for, for the uh, F um, execution engine. So you don't have to worry about that at all. Um, so then we look at the results, and in, in the case of results, left signifies errors. So we'll just log here and saying, hey, getting, well, let's say getting, um, uh, HTML here instead of API, and then let's replace this here again. Oops, uh, HTML, right? So getting HTML response failed to decode, and then we'll say exactly why it failed. This is um, so this error thing is a uh, more complex error type, and then we can we can get a printer like a console user friendly uh, message if we use the printer uh, function how do we know this well we didn't have to know this right we just copied the code from here so from this example we can assume that this is what this does because f from the way that it is uh, written here right and we can hover over printer and we'll see that it takes an error and returns a string right so we can assume that that's what it does from the name and then from its signature and then we have a response here in the right hand form where we can log it and uh, here if you remember the old code said uh, uh, this was a json right and then we have here json the stringify which takes a json and returns a string but since we're expecting it to be in a string format this thing is already a string so uh, this is not correct we need to remove this and we will save and this should compile correctly um, 
So let's see what kind of suggestions do we have here. Uh, it's telling us that they, we, they, it has a suggestion, right? So, right. So since we removed that j dot stringify, then it's telling us, hey, this importing this module is no longer required, right? So we can just apply suggestions here, uh, and then it will just get removed automatically. And when we save again, everything should go away. All the problems should go away. Um, Right, so now let's, let's try running this, right? Let's see if this thing worked. Let's run it, let's make the console slightly bigger. Yep, as it's, and as you can see, we've managed to download the, the contents of that, uh, that web page here, right? So next you could maybe do some parsing, you could maybe uh, grab some things from the web page, you can call multiple requests and combine them together or save this as a file locally and so on. Um, this is a pretty simple and quick way to get started. So uh, yeah, I hope this uh, this was helpful and um, uh, I, I hope I'll be seeing you in, in Slack or uh, or um, in the on the Discord server asking questions and, and learning PureScript. Thank you for